Here we have an EVGA 3090 FTW3 that came in for no power or came in for no display. Referral source, YouTube. EVGA RTX 3090 FTW3 powers on but does not display an image. The first PCIe power shows a red light. The card looks like this and we see a blue thermal pad here. Blue thermal pads here. So we know the video card was opened before and it's not factory. Now the first thing we want to do is check our 12 volt lines. It's very common on this model, on this video card, to have a V-core short circuit where it shorts out the 12 volt lines, the 12 volt rails. We have three of them. We have one, two, and three. We have a fuse, current sense resistor, a coil, same here, and same here. Three 12 volt lines. Start by measuring one of the 12 volt lines, we have 0.4 voltage drop. We do not have a short. Same reading, 0.4 voltage drop. We do not have a short. And 0.52. And we do not have a short. So this one is slightly higher than the others. Oh, look at this. The fuse is faulty even though we do not have a short circuit. The fuse is good here. But look at this. So right off the bat, we notice that we have a blown fuse, but that's weird because we do not have a short circuit. How did that fuse blow? What caused that fuse to blow? One thing I want to do quick, I'm currently in ohms mode. I just want to check our 1.8 volt line. We should be reading something around 227 ohms. And we have 229. Our PEX line should be between 3 to 9 ohms. And what are we reading? 7.8 ohms. Before we start the video, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is a China Shenzhen based PCB manufacturer and printed circuit board assembler with more than a decade in the field of PCB prototype and fabrication. They offer a wide variety of services, including 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, and much more. PCBWay is committed to meeting all your PCB needs. They offer quality on time delivery and competitive pricing. One to two layer boards starts at $5 with 24 hours turnaround. Get an instant quote by visiting PCBWay.com or click on the link below and make sure to check them out. I'm still in ohms mode. Let me quickly measure here our 12 volt PCIe line. And we do not have a short, our 3.3 volts. And we do not have a short. Let me flip the board quick. And I want to measure one fuse on the back. And I've done several videos where this one was blown and short circuit. And we do not have a short, the fuse is good. So, strange. What caused that fuse to blow? Usually a short circuit will cause it to blow. I have countless number of videos where a V-core short circuit will cause that fuse to blow. But here we do not have a short circuit. And this end of the fuse, the right side of the fuse, is connecting with the power connectors. Let me just take a look at the power connectors. Make sure everything is good here. Yeah, nothing obvious. And I do not know how that fuse blew. I mean, can we just replace the fuse and fix the card? I don't know. Too good to be true. What do you think caused that fuse to blow? Let me know. Leave it down in the comments. Let's replace it. That fuse does not look blown, but it's open. We do not just go by the looks, we have to measure. Unless it's obvious that the fuse is blown.
No flux, no prepping the board, no laddet solder, nothing. Let that video card dehydrate and suffer. If we measure now, and the fuse is good now. Now it's safe to power the video card on because we do not have a short circuit on the board. I measured our 1.8 packs, PCIe, 12 and 3.3 volts. I measured all 12 volt lines and we do not have a short circuit. If that fuse blew again, then we're gonna blame it on core or memory. Let me just quickly take a look. I mean, if any one of our DR MOSFETs were bad, then that would show up as a short circuit. Like a lot of videos that we did on the same model. Look at this, layers of thermal pads. Layers. Are we going to get lucky? Some people like to call everything lucky. Oh, look at that person. He's lucky. He has a successful business. Look at that person. He's lucky. He's driving a nice car. Look at that person. He's lucky. He has money. Okay, so let's see. Will the card power on? I mean, will it display anything on the screen? Will it work? I have a temporary heat sink on the core. And just for safety, just in case. And I'm going to put my finger on the power supply power button. And I'm going to be ready to turn off the power supply in case of any issues. Lights are on. Okay, you cannot see a thing. We do not have a red light, but we also do not have an image. I do not see a red light. Let me make sure all the connections are seated properly because we are no longer getting a red light. Let me turn the power supply off. I'm going to put the meter in voltage mode. We're going to put the power supply back on and I'm going to quickly measure core. Look at this. Now we got six beefs. Okay, so core is zero. We do not have core. We do have 12 volts, turn off the power supply, back on, and do we have 1.8 volts? We do. Do we have packs? And we do, 0 0.9, do we have core? And 0 0.719 for core, do we have memory? It's too late to measure for memory, so we have to shut off the power supply and turn it back on. Do we have memory? 1.37, 0 0.701 core. So core is measuring low. Everything else is good. We have 1.8, we have packs, we have memory, and core is the only problem. So. What I'm going to do is ask Big Boss to reassemble the cart, put the heat sink on, put the fans on. Maybe core is overheating and causing the video card not to display an image. I can usually power on the EVGA 3090 FTW3 without a heat sink and fan, but let's try it with the heat sink and fan. If it doesn't work, then what can you do? It's likely a problem with the core, or as I always say, memory slash core.
If it's a memory slash core issue, then we deem it a no fix, non practical repair. And I'll be back. All right, so I got the card back. And let's go ahead and test. Sometimes I can get away with having a small heat sink, power the card on just to see a Dell logo on the screen. But it did not work. So we reassembled the card and we're going to test it like this. I connected HDMI cable, PCIe, three power cables, everything is connected properly. And let's go ahead and power the card. Fans are spinning, lights are on. Let me put it on the bench. Are we going to see a logo on the screen? Yes, yes, yes. That did not happen before we reassembled the cart. Let's log in and we're going to run Firmark and see if the card will pass. The temperature is a bit high at 79 degrees. But of course, we have two layers of thermal pads on that cart. The customer needs to figure out what type of thermal pads he needs to put inside. We do not do thermal pads. But the card is running beautiful. Look at this. The fans kicked in. And the temperature is going down. That's good. The card is currently running at full power, full processing power. Amazing, amazing. So I'm going to keep it running for a couple of minutes. And we're done. We're going to invoice and mail it back to the customer. We're going to let the customer know that it's advisable to replace the thermal pads to get the proper thickness the proper thermal pads for this card. And if the customer opened this card once, he can open it again and he can put the thermal pads on that card. We do not have thermal pads for this card and we do not replace thermal pads for video cards. Anything that happens in the future, overheating or whatever the case may be, it will get blamed on the shop that replaced the thermal pads. So the customer can do his own research, figure out what thermal pads go on that card, install them, and look at this. The card is running amazing. The card is running beautiful. Look at this. So we are done. The card is fixed. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. We only replaced a fuse. How did that fuse blow? I'm wondering. If you have the answer or you think you have the answer, leave it down in the comments.